Hello, and welcome to Culture Shock. I'm Evan, and this is Brent. Yep. What are we talking about today, Brent? Today we're talking about Japanese cram schools. Cram schools? Yeah. Ooh. Now, I'm sure you can imagine what a cram school is, right? Uh, I've had cram sessions. That's basically what a cram school is. It is a school where you cram for uh, exams into the next level of schooling, basically. Ooh. Now, they're called juku in Japan, which is where things get a little complicated because the word's used for a couple of different things. Um, but the most important thing to remember is that in Japan, companies hire out of specific colleges. So Toyota, for example, will hire out of one particular college. Oh. Um, Mitsubishi will hire out of another college. Hmm. So the college you get into determines basically where you're going to work. Oh, and that's a whole career path. Exactly. So college choice is very important at that point. Extremely important. And then, of course, certain high schools are more or less likely to get into, into certain colleges. So it gets, becomes a very important thing. So there's a lot of effort around trying to get into the right college or the right high school or the right junior high school. And cram schools can get you there. It can get you the grades that you need to get into what you're, what you're trying to get to. Um, now, of course, a student has their normal hours in school, right? So the cram school has to operate on evenings and weekends and holidays. Mm. That's when you're in your cram school getting all of your extra schooling in. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it's not particularly fun. So is that vacation time included in cram school? Wow. Anytime it's... you're not in school, Anytime. you're in school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, these are all private schools. It's not state funded. It's just to help you get that extra little, little bit in. So if mom and dad will help shell out for it, then mm -hmm. it sets up your future. Exactly. And it sets up your, your future very, very early. Cram schools exist for every grade all the way down to first grade in Japan. One out of five first graders are in cram school. Wow. In addition to their regular schooling. Yeah, it's, it's that intense. And nearly all high schoolers are in cram school of uh, one type, type, type or another. With, with that focus on cram schools, does that mean at the university level that people don't transfer from one school to another? Not or? much, no. Not, much. Yeah. not as much in the U.S.? Certainly not, no. You know, once you're in that college, that's the college you're going to want to be in. Wow. Now, as you can imagine, this is expensive. Um, generally speaking, fees will be about $3,000 or more a year for a cram school. Um, and, of course, that's on top of regular school supplies and everything else. So it is tough. Now, some cram schools also target near dropouts and other students who are struggling a lot in school. Hmm. So it's not just to sort of get what you need to go, they're also... There's some remedial also. Exactly, to kind of get people to, uh, who might not be responding well to normal schooling. Hmm. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, now, what's complicated, we mentioned earlier, is that any sort of after-school lesson is considered juku. So hmm. it's not just a formal sort of cram school thing. So tennis lessons, piano lessons are all mm -hmm. considered juku technically. Oh. This is where things get a little complicated, especially if you're watching anime or reading manga. They'll mention somebody going to juku, and sometimes you assume it's a cram school, but it may actually just be... After school activity. Right. You insert know. here. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it, anything that they're kind of paying for to provide something you know, after, after class. Fencing lessons. Or... <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, now, we've all seen or heard of references to cram schools. We may have heard about that as a Japanese cultural thing, right? Um, and we have this, a lot of people have this view of cram schools as, oh my gosh, you know, students are going to their classes anyway, and they have to troop off to these cram schools <laughs> afterwards. But a lot of uh, students actually want to go to the other cram schools. In our other videos about things like uh, Japanese school life, remember we talked about how you stay in your classroom all day? Mm, yes. So, um, I mean, imagine that, that means you're with your same, like, 30 schoolmates all day, uh, if you go into a cram school, that's more people for you to get... Diverse uh, communications with other people, totally. so a little bit of insight. Are there, uh, do, do the cram schools draw from several different schools, so you meet kids from, with different uniforms? Totally. Or? Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Wow. So, yeah, a, a cram school will have nothing to do with the school you actually go to. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of the nice things. You get a chance to meet new people, make new friends potentially. And so a lot of folks actually want to go to cram school as this another opportunity to sort of get out a little bit. Uh, the other advantage is that because there's so many cram schools, uh, they're generally smaller classes. Hmm. So More uh, attention? Yep, more one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher, and uh, you're also getting, spending more time with those classmates. If you're in a, a, a cram school with 
you know, say, 10 or 15 students, you're going to form a much closer bond with those students, and you're going to get more chance to talk to your teacher than you will in a regular um, school, especially in these large districts. We have just these, these large places. Hmm. Um, yeah, so in cram schools, again, it's sort of a complicated thing because, you know, some people see them as this kind of um, uh, ridiculous place. And obviously there are some cram schools that are very intense. There's a great example of, a, um, I believe it's a high school, a cram school for high school, and they're all, you know, getting ready for those exams. It can be very, very intense and tough. Everybody seems so focused. <laughs> right, absolutely. Um, and then you get the more fun uh, guys. There's actually a famous uh, guy in Japan. He was on television ads for his local cram school. And he'd do a lot of uh, fun stuff in the ads. And, and so he became sort of a minor celebrity. Uh, <laughs> Making learning fun. <laughs> exactly. And that, that's kind of his, his view. And it's a good example of how cram schools also can be that... Um, antidote, if you will, to standard um, schooling, where sometimes, you know, standard schooling is more by the book, if you will, and a cram school can give you a little more pizzazz and a little more energy. Um, so it's, it's an interesting world. It's, it's, it's a whole gamut of things in Japan. Do, do, do cram schools um, focus on a particular university? They or can. They That's a good question. Um, so there will be some cram schools that are basically, here's how to get into, say, Tokyo University. Mm. And they're very focused around that. Um, others will be more focused around specific um, careers. So you might, if you want to get into anime, for example, there may be a, a, a cram school specifically for animation. Oh. And how to do that, or manga, <laughs> how, to, how to draw manga. Um, so, yeah, they, uh, they can be more vocational, if you will. Mm. Um, but, yeah, there are absolutely some wow. for certain, especially the more kind of Ivy League schools. You'll have schools that are just right about that. Tokyo University. Yeah. That's the one I always hear about. Yeah, it's, it's one of the big ones, definitely. <laughs> um, and it's a good example of how certain universities are mm, better for certain things. So while Tokyo University is considered one of the top ones, if you're into certain um, uh, careers, that might not be the best choice for you. It really depends. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's cram schools. Um, like I said, it's one of those big things that it's... it's as with many things of another culture, we tend to get one side of it, but there's more to it there's than that. There's more to it. Do they, are, are cram schools, do they have cram schools in the U.S.? Or? Certainly. Hmm. Um, so that there are cram schools. And again, you can think kind of any after school um, program that's intended to improve your grades or, or, or learn things. Uh, and this is an increasing thing over here in America, too, especially for like math and science, hmm. where even if you have a strong math and science curriculum at your school, you know, uh, it may not be as well supported as you want to. So mm -hmm. there are uh, different, different places you can go to supplement oh, that. Oh, I wonder if there there's anything for uh, some of the uh, subjects that have disappeared from the school curriculum, curri curri <laughs> curriculum, <laughs> yeah. uh, such as uh, some of the music or mm -hmm. art that has disappeared from some school systems. Sure, and I, I think, um, at least in America, a lot of that is is more picked up by Again, sort of, you know, after school piano lessons and things like that, the sort of traditional stuff. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I'm thinking it might be fun to uh, check out some uh, cram schools then. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us for this episode of Culture Shock. You bet.